from zero to hero, bursting through barriers with many years of anguish. So basically, I'm telling you I'm a hero. But actually, it's just because it rhymed with zero, and I thought it was good. <laughs> <laughs> so a little bit about me. I say it's already been mentioned, so that's just it. I'm just going to skip that. But there's me on the ship the other day. I thought that was important to put that in. And you can follow me Twitter, Debs underscore Brian, or Debbie O'Brien on LinkedIn. And as I said, a media developer expert, a Google developer expert, and as of recently, a Microsoft Most Valuable Professional. Woo! Thank you. <laughs> and the reason I'm putting this in, because it's very, very important, because I'm very proud of this, and you'll see why. Because for me, to have Google and Microsoft think I'm good is just, it's pretty awesome. So there's me uh, working there on the ship. Oh, that was cool as well. So let me take you back. I'm going to take you on a cruise of my life <laughs> and how I got into tech. So it all started in 1996. <laughs> So yes, I know you all thought I was very young, but I'm actually now showing my age. I'm not young at all. <laughs> and back in the day when Dream Dreamweaver was cool. So I started building websites. This is very Irish, by the way. I started building websites before we even had the internet. <laughs> so we got the internet in the last trimester, and I basically started building the websites, and we couldn't actually see the internet and publish it until the last one, when we eventually got the internet in. And like the job prospects were pretty cool. You could work for Amazon and make really cool sites. Like front end development was awesome back then, <laughs> you know? And if you didn't like Amazon, I mean, you could work for Nintendo. They had a little bit more color, a little bit more life. Or Microsoft, yeah, their sites are just not great. Or you could do Disney. Disney had a little bit more life into it, but this is basically where the job prospects were. So basically I decided front end development is not for me. So what did I do? I moved to Mallorca. And uh, I worked on a stage, this is me. <laughs> and I had more fun on a stage, having fun. And uh, I'm not a professional dancer or singer, but you know, I can just go along with it and have fun. And that's what I did for many, many years. And in the winter, I would basically just travel the world. So I traveled Australia, traveled many other countries, or I'd go skiing, work in a ski resort. I had the perfect life. It was absolutely fantastic. But then I did something very, very stupid. I fell in love. <laughs> and that meant, okay, you're going to have to stay in one country, make one decision, so that was it. Uh, I basically decided, right, I'm going to go back to studying, try and get a proper job and, you know, have time to spend with my husband. And so I went back and studied PHP, HTML, because, you know, things had changed. CSS had changed a lot as well. And, of course, Photoshop. Photoshop was very important, so, you know, learned it all. And basically then what I did was I went knocking on doors. And I was like, you know, I can build you the best website ever. And I got a lot of work in um, making menus for people and kind of rubbish stuff, you know, Photoshop work. But, you know, it paid the bills, so it was okay. But I knocked on every door and I was like, I'm going to build you the best website ever. Just trust me. In the latest technology, Flash. <laughs> oh, not that Flash, sorry. <laughs> flash. <laughs> Yes, uh, Flash was there great back then. We could do animations, and I made animations. Everything was spinning. Everything was moving. They were really cool. And um, websites looked terrible, but, you know, it was fun. But basically, what happened then? Along came the iPhone. And Steve Jobs says, Flash is not going to make it to the iPhone. So all the websites I built, <laughs> yeah, they were going to go down the drain. So that wasn't very good. So what do you do next? Tables everywhere. <laughs> So this is, um, this is the website I built, and it's basically, it's terrible. I don't know if you know, uh, <laughs> it's still live, right? This is actually still live. You can actually look at it. It's very good, and I'm very proud of it, because it's the first proper big website that I built, but I would never, ever go into that code and you know, make it responsive uh, or anything. And the menu, actually, is built using fireworks. I don't know if anyone remembers fireworks, yeah? yeah. So that was a great way for people like me who have no JavaScript skills to be able to make drop-down menus, and it just did it all for you. And that's why there's all this strange code in there that nobody understands. But it was cool, and it meant that I was able to basically build really good websites um, with tables. <coughs> and then um, they asked for like a CMS, so I built a CMS in PHP. I'm probably trying to tell you that I'm a very good PHP developer, but I'm not. Um, but it's quite easy to kind of just do a little bit of things. So I was able to build very uh, bad uh, CMSs, but then they all kind of wanted Facebook feeds and things like this and, and changing photos, and I was like, I can't do that. So WordPress to the rescue, <laughs> yeah? Um, so this is uh, WordPress. Um, WordPress was really bad back then, so it didn't you know, look very good. Um, but 
by using WordPress, I was able to do pretty much everything. And I built like websites for restaurants, for taekwondo clubs, for um, all sorts of stuff. And it was a great way of earning money. I mean, it wasn't really very exciting, you know, working in WordPress, but it kept me going for many years. And then I got my first front end role, first real proper front end job for a company. No, I did not work as a model. What I had to do was make beautiful women even more beautiful. <laughs> Photoshop skills, make them thinner, <laughs> take away all their tattoos, and um, basically it was an online sex shop. It was great fun. <laughs> 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 but you gotta start somewhere, right? And uh, it, was, it was a fantastic job and I was so happy and it was, everything was going great. And then what happened? They ran out of money. Oh. So basically, um, yeah, it was basically me there, no money, no job. Oops. All right. So then what do you do in Mallorca when you've got no job? You decide, well, I'm going to be an English teacher. You know, there's a lot of <laughs> Spanish people, they need help teaching, learning English. So I took my course, I became an English teacher, and that was my way of, of basically making money. So, but I always want to try and get back into technology. And then I got a fantastic job yet again. This was a really, really cool company, Food Hits. I made this website. Look at it, it's beautiful. It is really, really cool. And it's basically a restaurant guide, a worldwide restaurant guide. And we were going to put all the restaurants in it from all around the world. I was the only person on the team, but I was going to get all the data manually by going to their websites or going to their Facebook pages and getting it all. We went to Ireland and we launched at a massive event. These are my cousins who we hired for the day because we couldn't afford to pay anyone. And uh, we basically showed everyone in Dublin that this is the website. And people loved it. Their feedback was amazing. They were like, oh, this is really good. We really want this. There was like, you know, gluten-free menus, gluten-free restaurant, everything. It was fantastic. But literally a week after this, they ran out of money. <laughs> and I was basically left with absolutely no job yet again. <laughs> so what do you do when you got no job? Oops, you're going too fast. Well, you go back to being a teacher. Now, this is me as a teacher, right? And uh, it's not, um, not just me dressing up as a chicken because I was a chicken going back to being a teacher. I actually used to teach like this. It was a great school. And we would teach um, through drama, through science, through arts and crafts. It was great fun. So it was, you know, it was good. But it wasn't enough for me. It was like, after a while, I was like, I just want to get back into tech. And then I got another job. Great. This was the one that was going to get me rich. This is um, Propio, which later got rebranded to the iProperty company. And um, this one's like an Airbnb for buying and selling properties. So it was like really good. This is what we need, especially in, in England, for example. You need an estate agent. Well, with this one, you don't. So you know estate agent fees. Perfect. I was like, we worked for this um, for a year, a year and a half, basically. It was a great site. And then they ran out of money. <laughs> the thing was, we were very stupid here because um, they told us they were going to get investments and we were like yeah you know this is going to work and we stayed working for three months without getting paid we really believed that it was going to happen and you know we're just like we can do this we can do this and yeah after three months of earning absolutely no money i basically said no it's um time to go back to being an english teacher and you know at this stage i was like you know i don't want to be an english teacher all my life so i'll do it again and i'll go back and do a couple of job interviews so i went for job interviews and um they were all asking for react Vue, angular webpack jess cypress and i was like i don't know any of these i can't where do i start what do i do now i had studied on anyone know the o'reilly school of technology yeah it's closed down right <laughs> so um I, that's where i learned javascript and um, that's where I failed because I never completed it and I never learned it. So I basically considered myself not clever enough to learn JavaScript. So I was just going to stay in front end, CSS, HTML. That's what I was good at. And JavaScript was never going to, I was never going to make it. I wasn't clever enough. But all the jobs in front end, this is Chris Coyer here and his, his talk and he's explaining all what a front end developer has to do. And I mean, there's so much stuff now front end developer has to do. I can't do any of that. So I'm just looking at that going, you know what? I can't do any of that. I'm going to just be an English teacher. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I was quite okay with it. I was like, you know what? In life, there's more things than your career. You don't all need a fantastic career. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to concentrate on my family. I've got a fantastic husband. Um, we're going to have children. And it doesn't matter if I'm just an English teacher. And I'm just going to, you know, have kids and everything's going to be fine. I'll be happy with that. And sometimes life isn't exactly what we want or what we expect. So, um... I went through a very difficult time in my life. Uh, we went through four years of hospital treatments. 
And after eight failed attempts, basically it was like, yeah, I guess, you know, that's not going to work out either. So, and it's kind of like really, really hard because you're basically just climbing a ladder all the time, you know, and everyone's saying, you know, uh, this is going to work out this time. You're, you're going to just stay positive. This is going to be it. And you climb up that ladder and someone just takes it and you just fall down again. And you know what you do when, when that happens? You basically put the ladder back up again. And you say, you know what, I can do this. And you start climbing again. You climb back up again to the top and you climb up again. And then basically it all just falls apart. You fall down again. There's only so many times you can put that ladder up there and climb up there. Because after a while, when someone's just pulling it down all the time, you, know, you just say, you know what, I'm just going to stay at the bottom because... I can't climb anymore. And that's when you basically consider yourself a failure. And I considered myself completely a failure. I'd failed in my career. I'd failed at having kids. I, I was just, I was in a deep, deep, dark hole. And I considered failure as a lack of success. And I wasn't successful. So I'm a failure. And, you know, there are just two ways. Success is that way. Failure is that way. And I'm just going down this road. And I'm going to just stay there because, you know. And it was, it was very, very difficult. You're in a very, very dark hole. And you don't know how to get out of it. I don't think you even want to get out of it. You just you know, uh, what's the point? What's the point of being here? You can't have what you want, so why? And that's when you need a guardian angel. And there's always, I think, there's always a guardian angel in your life. And this is uh, my friend Sylvia. And she was my guardian angel. She says, Debbie, I'm studying to be a dream builder. And I want you to come and do my course. And I was like, oh, God. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, okay, I'll come along, you know. She said, I'm not going to charge you any money. So I was like, great, because I don't have any. So that's good. <laughs> And, um, and she basically said, what is your dream? And I'm kind of going, what is my dream? You want to ask my dream seriously? Like, doctors can't make my dream come true. Now you're going to make my dream come true? Like, come on. But I wrote it down. I was like, my dream is to be a front-end programmer in a really cool tech company, working with a really good team, so I can continue to learn and grow. Sunday morning. Doesn't make me feel alive, yes, because I love programming. So this is my dream. Now, at that time, it was like, you know, she's asking me what my dream is, and I'm kind of going, right, this is my dream. Imagine if someone asked you, what is your dream? If time or money was not important, if time or money is not in the way, what is your dream? What would you answer? Because this is my dream. I said, really? My dream is to work for Google. That is my dream. But I live in Mallorca. It's a really small island. There's no Google. There's very few tech companies. And you know what? I'm not a very good developer. <laughs> So I'm never going to work for Google. So it's just not going to happen. So I was like, you know, this is a great course. This is a lot of crap. Uh, you're not going to make my dreams come true. See you later. And she was like, she's Irish. So she's like, slap in the face. Come on, Debbie, come on. Seriously, what is your dream? If time and money not the way, um, your dream is to work for Google. She said, define that dream. What is Google? I was like, OK. So Google is a fantastic company. We are constantly learning, constantly growing, constantly improving. We get to work with the best people, where it's just like constantly uh, new technologies. And she's like, great. Go and find that company in Mallorca. And I was like, it doesn't exist. She's like, everything you dream of exists. So go and find that company. So you know what do you do when you're trying to look for a company? You use Google, right? So I'm going to use Google to find my Google <laughs> in Mallorca. And I did. I found Trivago. And Trivago is kind of really cool. Like, this is their offices. This is the one in Dusseldorf, but they have cool offices in Mallorca as well. And they're like a really, really cool company. Fanatic Learning. So, this, like, you know, this is the kind of company I want to work for that wants you to constantly learn. Uh, people focused company, empower people to get more out of life. I'm like, yes, this is my Google. I was like, I can work for them. So, I was like, okay, great. What do I do now? And she's like, don't worry, just everything will fall into place. You just keep, you know. And it did. A job opportunity came up. A friend of ours that we went to church with actually worked there and he was able to get my CV onto the desk of the right person. So it's like, great, this is my letter I wrote. 21st of March, 2017. Hi, I'm Debbie O'Brien. I love what I do. I could spend 10 hours working on CSS and SAS and it would feel like 10 minutes. I love coding and seeing results. I like fixing problems and love challenges. I love learning new things. I want to be the best I possibly can at what I do. And to do that, I need to work with the best so that I can continue to improve and grow and learn. I want to be part of a team, a good team, and I want to write code day in, day out, but not weekends. I was very clear on that. <laughs> and I want to get paid for it. That's my dream. That's what I sent in tr into Trivago. And basically, they came back with a challenge. Build a booking engine in React. I was like, I don't even know JavaScript. <laughs> So they gave me six weeks to build a booking engine in React. And I went back to my dream builder and I went, yeah, this is great. So now what do I do? And she's like, 
fantastic. I was like, how on earth is this fantastic? I, ca I can't do that. And she said, well, what do you need in order to build that booking engine? I said, well, I need JavaScript. She's like, great. And I'm like, no, not great. I have tried to learn. I paid 6,000 euros to O'Reilly <laughs> School of Technology, and I failed. I can't learn JavaScript. And she's like, what do you need to learn JavaScript? I'm like, I said, I need a teacher. <coughs> she's like, great, go find a teacher. I'm like, oh, come on, I live in Mallorca, right? There's no coding camps, there's no, there's no coding schools, there's nothing, I can't do this. And she's like, go and find it, everything that you dream of is possible. So I was like, okay, I, I was kind of like just, I'm going to prove her wrong, you know, I'm going to show her that there's no possible way I can do this. <laughs> so um, I used Google again, and I found Open Classrooms. Anyone heard of Open Classrooms? Yeah, so they're a French company, and they're an online tech degree. And basically, they had these front-end tech degree course with a mentor that you have a one-to-one -one video session an hour a week. I was like, okay, this looks good. So I called them up and I said, you know, um, I want to do this, but I don't want to learn WordPress and HTML and CSS. I want to jump right in and go to the React and just learn React. Can I do that? And they said, well, if you're paying, you can do whatever you want. It's like, great. So basically, I said, okay, this is it. I'm going to build that booking engine for Trivago. And I basically found it very difficult. It's like, there's six weeks. So I've got six weeks to do it. So I gave up my job as a teacher. And I decided to become a student. My husband went, Debbie, you cannot give up a job when you don't have a job. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, this is my only opportunity. I've got to put everything into it. I'm going to give it one more shot. I'm going to learn JavaScript this time. And if it doesn't work out, I'll just go back to being a chicken teaching English. <laughs> so basically, um, I would study seven days a week, 12 hours a day. Um, uh, no joking. I would actually go to the gym and I would study on the treadmill. This is me doing an hour, uh, 10 kilometers. And I would uh, use every single opportunity. I needed to make this work. So I was just obsessed. I was going to do this. And basically, I just studied, studied, studied. Even during the, the gym when I was doing like the weights, after I'd like, you know, rest, I'd take up my, my iPhone, I'd start reading, and then I'd put it down. So I put in literally seven days a week, 12 hours a day. There's no joke. I, it's literally what I did. And I did it. This is my booking engine. It is amazing. Okay, I know it's crap. But, um, <laughs> but it worked. You could go from one to two to three, four. You could, like, that actually worked. You know, you know, and the, the, there was no, it, was, well, it wasn't dynamic. It was kind of very static. But I was really proud of it. And after six weeks, I sent them in an email, and I kind of went, you know what? I'm going to tell you the truth here. I didn't know JavaScript before I started. I just have to do this. These are the courses after doing. I've signed up for Open Classrooms. I've signed up for Treehouse. I've read all these books. And if I had more time, this is what I'd do. And I got an email back. Good morning, Debbie, again. Thanks a lot for your effort. I can see how much you're willing to learn and grow, and I can see potential. I was like, yes. So I was kind of like, I am in there. So they gave me another challenge. Two more weeks, and they said, um, they said I had to bu build a, a Chrome uh, extension and some sort of readme and make uh, content dynamic. So you know, I did that. And then I basically said, good morning, Debbie. By the way, I should say you're one of the most motivated candidates I've seen. I was like, yes, I have got this. So literally, I was like, you know, I was so, this job was mine. And I'd kind of told all my family, all my friends. Remember, I'd been in a very difficult time. So everyone was very, very supportive. And I was, Trivago was everywhere. You know when you really want someone, you, you turn on the TV and Trivago there, you walk along, there's a sign, Trivago there. They were everywhere. And everyone just said, yep, you're going to get this job. And then they said, we'd like to give you another challenge. I said, like, oh my God, you know, it's like eight weeks now working for free, but okay, you know, Give it to me. So they gave me a WordPress challenge. And I was like, you know, not WordPress again. I cannot do another WordPress. But I did the challenge and I built, the, I built it for them. But I basically wrote down, you know, I don't want the WordPress job. I want the front end job. And then, you know, after nine weeks of basically full time trying to get this job in Trivago, I was like, this is it. I've got the job. No. Unfortunately, you have not made it to the next step. Please understand, we cannot give you any detailed feedback on your case study results. It did not work out this time. We wish you all the best for your future job search. And I just cried. I was like, you know, and I don't blame Chirago because they're right to not hire me because I really wasn't very good. So, but I think the hardest thing was basically going and having to tell everyone that you failed yet again. So I'm calling my family, I'm calling my friends, and I'm saying, yeah, no, I failed. I didn't make it again. So that was really hard. But, you know, um, Open Classrooms called me and they said, um, we want your testimonial. And I was like, great. Trivago said no to me. I'm a failure and you want my testimonial. <laughs> That's nice. 
And they said, no, we want your testimonial because, yes, Trivago said no to you, but you keep going and you haven't given up. I said, okay, well, that's true. So, okay, what do you want? You want me to write something down or what do you want? And they said, well, we'd like to fly you to Paris so that we can record a video for you all expenses paid. I was like, okay, <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> so this is me and they're in Paris and they're filling me my testimonial. It was really interesting because in the Airbnb, there was this in the kitchen. Life is short, focus on what matters and let go of what doesn't. And I was like, oh my God. And then at the bottom it says, make it happen. So I was like, okay, there's signs everywhere. I can do this, I can do this. Now I was actually very, very negative in that moment. I was like, there's no possible way. This is actually the video that they made. I think it's got about 100,000 views on YouTube. So it's like, it's been really, really good. And it's, it's very good about making you believe you can keep going. So I've actually watched it so many times because I just feel like I can't do it anymore. Okay. And then I listen to myself. So I think I made that just for me. And uh, when I was there, they said, when you get your job in Mallorca, we're going to come back and we're going to film Debbie part two. And I was like, look, it's never going to happen. I was working on a, building a, a game in JavaScript at the time. It was really, really difficult. And I was like struggling. It was kind of very hard. And I said, you know, I'm, not, I'm never going to get a job in Mallorca in tech. It's not going to happen. So forget your video. But they were very, 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 um, very positive and very encouraging. And then I had my worst interview ever. Me, three people, computer, big screen TV, live code. I was like, I couldn't even use the mouse. They had to get me a different mouse. Uh, I couldn't do anything. They asked me CSS question. I know CSS. I've 10 years working in CSS and SAS. I can do anything with CSS, but I couldn't even answer the CSS question. I was like, I was so nervous. I was like, ground, please swallow me up now. And then they said, can you go to the whiteboard and do some sort of coding challenge? And I just went, now I'm a teacher, remember? I've been on a stage in Mallorca for seven years as an entertainer. I have no problem getting up on a whiteboard. And I sat there and I went, no. <laughs> and they looked at me like, as if, like, what are we going to do with this girl, you know? And I'm like, no. So they gave me a piece of paper and a pen, and I, I did the coding challenge, but it was terrible. I walked out of there, and I said, you know what? I am never, ever, ever going to be in that position again, where I'm put in a position where I'm uncomfortable. So what I did, Treehouse has a great program where they um, do peer reviews. And I said, every single day, I'm going to get up in the morning, and I'm going to do a peer review. I'm going to just spend my time reviewing other people's code, because that means that I'm going to see so many different code bases, I'm never, ever going to be scared again. And I was the JavaScript student with the most peer reviews ever. So uh, I got my 100 tech degree peer review badge. I did more than that, but they didn't have any more badges because I thought no one ever would ever get there. <laughs> and then I got my first real job. So this is Loggy Travel. It's a massive travel agency in Mallorca. I walked in there and I was ready. I was like, you know, promises, any kind of question, async deck, just ask me anything, I'm ready. They didn't ask me a single question. I was like, come on, I'm really prepped for this. And they said, no, the challenge that you've done, you did in two days, we've never seen anyone do that challenge so well, code so well, and do it in such, such a quick time. So we don't need to ask you anything. And basically, I got hired straight away. I walked out and I kind of went, I think I just got a job. <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of didn't believe. I was like, maybe they'll call me. Maybe it's not real, you know, because I didn't sign anything. But, you know, it's, is it real? And you know what happens? As soon as I started in this job, um, I got moved into Blue Kiri. So Blue Kiri was the other company they had, which is the architectural department, because I went in and um, I was meant to build components and I never built a single component. I went in and they s I was like, you're doing, why are you doing that? that? You could just build a script for that. And like, you know, you don't have to manually do that, I'll build your script. So I started just building like developer tools. And so they moved me into the architectural department and I'm in this fantastic company and I'm like two weeks, three weeks in there. And what happens? Open Classrooms come over to make the video. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, this is great. So I've just started in this job, and now everyone's going to know that I've just started, that I've just learned JavaScript, and that I really don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. And I have a camera crew following me around the whole company. <laughs> <laughs> and I was mortified. Now, we made this video, and it was a really, really good video. And... Um, there's actually, it's just about me and they, they interview like the, my boss, they interview this guy, this guy is the guy I worked with, but this guy is also the guy from that horrible interview I mentioned. He had changed companies. So they were able to get that on video of how I had progressed from back then in that interview to now. So it's, it's like, it's pretty amazing video. So I was really proud of it and it was fun. But what happened was I was so scared going to work every day. I was so scared. I was like, you know, I'm just going to lose my job any day now. And I got so scared, I ended up writing a, a message to my boss. And I said, look, if you're going to sack me, 
can you just let me know beforehand so I can work on it and fix it? And he was like, Debbie, what are you talking about? I was like, well, now you're going to figure out that I'm actually not really very good. And he's like, Debbie, we all think you're amazing. Everyone thinks you're amazing. What Come on, seriously. Now, my boss was great because he knew all about imposter syndrome, and I didn't know what imposter syndrome was. And he started sending me messages and, and posts on other people who had been through this. And, you know, it's pretty much like um, you think this is what I know and this is what everyone else knows. And, you know, it's more or less much more balanced. Or maybe I know this, but you know this. We all know different things. Now, it's very, very hard to kind of like, you know, take that imposter syndrome away and just say like, okay, I don't have imposter syndrome anymore, right? But when you read about other people, like famous people and like film stars that basically say, I'm going to get sacked every day, or I'm not even a good actress. Why, why do they keep hiring me? Why do they keep calling me? Won awards, like, you know, it's, it's incredible the amount of people. So my boss was very, very helpful in just kind of helping me get over it. And uh, Treehouse, so I remember I started studying in Treehouse in, in May 2017. Treehouse called me and they said, um, we'd like you to work for us. Um, helping the mentors, helping the other people um, to, get through th to get through this. And I was like, um, wow, this is kind of really cool. And I got off the phone from the head of Treehouse, and I said to my husband, I went, wow, I knew it was bad in America, but I didn't think they were that desperate. They can't <laughs> find anyone. And I seriously believed it. <laughs> And he said to me, he said, Debbie, maybe, maybe you're actually just good. No, 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 there's this real shortage of people in America. <laughs> I just didn't know it was that bad. And that's, how, that's what I believe. I was like, well, I'm going to do it because they obviously need me. So, yeah, I'm going to take this job. So I did that on a part-time basis, just helping out other students. When View School called me and they said, we want you to write courses um, on View. And I'm like, okay, this, they, they just think I'm clever. I don't know why people think I'm good. This is ridiculous. But I thought, you know what, this is not so bad because if my course is really bad, they just won't publish it, so it'll be fine. So I did take the job in, in um, View School to write View courses as well. And, you know, I wanted to be a speaker. And uh, I went up to Denise Jacobs after an event and I said, you know, I really want to be a speaker. I love the stage. I love getting, you know, I just love talking. I'm really good at talking. <laughs> but I cannot get up in front of a room of developers and basically tell I can't there's no way I'm not good enough I, I mean everyone in this room is better than me so I mean why would someone want to listen to me and she was like you know swipe left get those thoughts get everything get all that away and uh, Dennis Dennis said you know just go out there and tell stories you're not teaching people you're telling a story and if we don't tell stories if you don't tell stories nobody learns so just go out there and do it so um, so basically yeah my first time as a speaker was actually in Lithuania at a Bill Stuff conference, and that's me giving my first talk. That is 14 months ago now. So, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and I got up on the stage at the end, and I kind of went, I'm going to make the big stage next year. I'm going to make the big stage next year. I didn't make the Bill Stuff <laughs> big stage, but I did make many big stages. So, um, so that was really cool. And um, imposter syndrome was back. So, January the 15th, 2019, just after I'd given my first talk, I kind of sent a message to, uh, to someone I admired and I went, hey, I'm looking for ideas to submit a conference. Kind of also scared, I don't know enough. But then I watched some conferences and I think, I know all that. I was like, you know, I want to do it, I want to do it, but I just, I can't. And Jeff sent me a message. Haven't we been through this already? <laughs> <laughs> you kicked ass in Villainous. And I was like, yeah, I had spent many hours talking to him about how, you know, I didn't feel good enough. And I was like, oh yes, maybe we have, okay. Thank you. And sometimes you just need that little push, that just someone to push you just that little bit. You know, my husband was very angry. He's like, oh, I tell you all this all the time and you have to listen to these guys. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you just need someone who actually has been through it, who knows what you're going through. But the voice never goes away. Never goes away. It's always there. Um, and even, even today, even this morning, I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to do a talk on imposter syndrome. And in my head, it's like, you're not good enough. You can't do this talk in front of all these people. <laughs> and you're like, come on, go away, go away, go away. Just go, go somewhere else. So, yeah, dreams do come true. Write down your dreams. Will I work for Google? Ha absolutely no idea. Probably not. But it doesn't really matter because there's so many other opportunities out there and I just know that I can, I can pretty much do anything I want right now. And when I say write down your dreams, this is what I actually did. I used to write down my dreams every single day. And I mean, this is what I wrote down. I want to have a great job in programming, working for a great company, where you continuously grow and progress and learn new things, where you work with a great team of people, I wrote this down every single day. It was the whole page. Was, it was really long. And everything that I've written down while I was doing that Dream Builder course has actually come true. 
which is kind of like really amazing. Like I wanted to travel the world. I wanted to have weekends free. Um, everything that I wrote down, I got. I should have wrote down that I wanted to earn 100,000 euros or something. <laughs> That's the only thing I didn't write down. I might have got it. But seriously, write down your dreams. It's really, really important. And I still do that today. Everything is possible. So when you think, you know, I can't do this, I can't do this, I've just proved it. Everything is possible. You just have to put yourself in the mind, in the mindset. Remember that you are awesome. You can do whatever you put your mind to. You just have to work hard for it. Nobody said it would be easy. As my friend Heather says, know that you are good enough. And when someone gives you a door, and you think, that door is, that door is an opportunity. And you know, you think, wow, I'm going to open that door. You look through it and you go, wow, this is amazing. But oh my god, that is so scary. <laughs> so you close the door again. Because that wall, you're familiar with that wall. And you know, I, you know, I can stay here. I can stay in my comfort zone. And I can be happy here. And what I really want is on that other side of that door. And it's really scary. Well, you know what? Maybe on that other side of that door is exactly what you want. So why not just open that door and walk through it? And if it's scary, it's probably what you want to do. If it's not scary, then it's probably not what you want. So when it comes to fear, you really have to walk with fear and not walk away with fear. And just take those opportunities, take those steps and open doors. And my friend Jeff says, hey, you can do it. Thank you. <laughs>